Hello everybody and welcome. <laughs> Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. My name is Harry Wolf and I talk about coding around these parts. This video is all about time. I made this video because it's about a brand new API coming to the browser sometime soon called Temporal. And you may have guessed it, this new API is all about time. So without further ado, let's ask the question, what is Temporal and why are we all so excited about time finally? Okay. Here we are on the GitHub page for the Temporal Proposal. And this is the place where we'll be able to answer the first question that we all have, which is, what is Temporal? And why am I so excited about it? I get excited about a lot of things. This one's no exception. Very excited about this one. So the Temporal Proposal is a, it provides standard objects and functions for working with dates and times similar to the current JavaScript date object, but as you'll see later on this video, much, much better. Uh, this proposal is currently in stage three. Uh, stage three is what the ECMAScript standards body uses to designate stability of new proposals to the JavaScript language. Uh, it's stage three of four which is actually zero index. And stage three is exciting because it means that all the people in the standards body have largely come together and reached an agreement on what this should look like. They've all used their big brains and small noses, I made that up, to figure out all the edge cases and details to find some behavior that satisfies everyone's concerns. The way a proposal goes from stage three to stage four is if two browsers actually implement it in their own C or C++ backend. So at this point, it's only a matter of time until it becomes stage four. No proposal would be complete without actually having some way to play around with it. So thankfully, this proposal actually comes with a polyfill, a way for us to actually play with it today in our browsers. They do note that this polyfill is a non-production polyfill. And the reasons for that is twofold. One, it is built for spec compliance, not speed, which means that if you were to, that the code in this polyfill is not really optimized. It's just supposed to work according to specification, not according to speed. So it'll be slow if you use it in production. And two, um, this, Proposal is at stage three, which means that the bar for making API changes is extremely high. Nonetheless, changes may occur as the result of feedback from implementation in JS engines, which is to say that as Chrome, Firefox, Safari actually starts implementing this in their engines and they figure out some weird edge case or something that's too complicated, that may force a change, but the likelihood of that is again, extremely small, making this relatively safe to use and play around with today. Hence why I'm here. So the big question becomes, why go through all this trouble to create a brand new API for dealing with dates and times? Well, thankfully this proposal also has a motivation along with it. And it very clearly states in its opening sentence that date has been a long standing pain point in ECPAScript which I cannot disagree with. There's actually a whole uh, blog post that they link to here about fixing JavaScript date. And this blog post, I'm not gonna go into detail here. I encourage you to read it if you are curious about it, um, but it kind of delves into ways they could have fixed date as is in a backwards compatible way. And the conclusion being that the only way to truly fix date is not in a backwards compatible way. Hence the introduction of a brand new API called Temporal. Uh, I, I love this one little section. I love this one little section of the blog post about how um, when Brendan Ike was tasked to make JavaScript in only 10 days, he was under orders to make it like Java such that he copied the date object from the existing infant Java date implementation. And the fun part about this is that that implementation was terrible. In fact, all of its methods were deprecated and replaced in the Java 1.1 release in 1997. However, us JavaScript engineers are still living with this same API 20 years later. So 
thankfully, some very proactive people have tasked themselves with fixing this 20 year long mistake. So how is Temporal going about fixing that mistake? Well, they detail that in the proposal repo. Um, it's providing easy to use APIs for date and time computations, first class support for time zones, including daylight saving time safe arithmetic, which if you've ever tried to add and subtract times uh, is horrible. You don't enjoy it. Um, you can deal with objects representing fixed dates and times, uh, parsing string formats, and also what I find to be most exciting is that it also has every object be immutable, which makes it very clear to trace what changes you've made, and not worry about mutating something. Uh, immutability is probably a more in vogue thing nowadays, so I'm glad to see them also hop on that bandwagon. And lest it not be unstated, but leap seconds are not represented because leap out of here, leap seconds. Another reason why Temporal is being created is because it'll be built directly into the browser itself. Because right now, if you want to deal with dates and times correctly in the browser, you have to pull from some third party library. Uh, one of the most popular ones still to this day is uh, Moment.js, which they're trying to deprecate because they don't want you to use it anymore. Uh, there's now Luxon, which is by the um, Moment.js uh, same org. And there's also date functions. So there's all these uh, user land libraries to help us manage dates and times. But again, that's size you're adding to your applications that would be best to be built in by default. So I'm glad to see that not have to worry about learning new APIs, depending upon which application I use, just learning the new temporal browser API. So by now, hopefully have you a little bit excited about temporal. If not, then maybe I should spend more time getting you excited. Sorry, that joke's too easy to pass up. Uh, but the question then becomes, what does temporal look like? Thankfully, they have this, this is the um, GitHub pages version. Well, not, it's just the hosted website version of the temporal docs over here. And what's lovely about this is that you can actually use the polyfill in this browser. As noted at the bottom of the page, the page includes a script which loads an implementation of Temporal in the browser. So that means that we can open up the old console here, type in Temporal, and presto change it, we have that entire polyfill ready for our consumption. And you can see all these top level objects, let's just kind of play around with things, and then you can kind of consult the documentation up above. Um, what's kind of awesome around here is you can kind of just, you know, see an example at the top. There's the temporal now namespace, which takes, you know, time now. And you can do instant to get a representation of that. So if we go to uh, A, there's all these methods on it, which you can see over here, which is fun to just kind of scroll down and see what happens. Um, I'm always a partial fan of uh, to JSON because I love JSON and you can see kind of how this right now, you know, I know the exact second when I recorded this, um, this is the date just now. And that's kind of uh, the theme here. There's this fun little graph at the bottom of this page that kind of shows you the uh, relationship of all the objects. So there's, there's this graph out here, but actually one that I like more is this one here. You kind of see the breakdown of a long, uh, date string and kind of see how it's broken down into objects. So you can see we just use instant, which includes the um, plain month day, plain month, so it's essentially the plain date time, plus the uh, time zone office in time zone offset with Z. So we could do temporal dot uh, plain date and well actually we can do now dot plain date ISO to get a plain date representation today. So I can see here plain date is just the date. So year, month, day, which is so silly backwards, but you can do JSON and then you can see that represented really easily. That makes it really easy to deal with. And the same thing, you have all the time zones and calendars, you have zone date times. You can actually make a date time that has the time zone information built in as well. Um, what I also love about the API is that, you know, math becomes really easy. Uh, you can make instance from a string that you can construct. Um, you can have an object way of making a zone date time to have things clearly laid out. 
uh, a plain daytime again from an object in here, which is awesome. You can kind of take the properties and actually have everything be very a very clear API. And what's also awesome is you can do arithmetic. So you can do, uh, where's my phone little ad? Is it here? Ah, so if I click into one of these, you can see the entire documentation to see all the methods on a instant instance. And you can see that you can take a from, which is from any of these strings. And then you can also, uh, this is the same method. So you can compare two to see if they're at the same time. And then also what is really cool is the methods which you can add time. So you can make an instant and add five hours from now. How cool is that? Or you can subtract. So you can subtract an hour from that instant as well. And you can say how long until something. So there's this whole way that you can actually compare things. Uh, the one thing that Temple doesn't have, which Moment.js does, which I'm sure someone will be able to easily reproduce in a very small size, which actually might be a fun exercise here, is how to use Temple to make those um, fancy relative, um, those fancy relative of times that Moment.js has. Uh, let's go to Moment.js. So the big feature that Moment.js has is being able to do this relative time. And this English is not included in temporal, but I'm sure to add that in would be pretty dang simple, which actually might be a fun project for someone to take on. But that's kind of what temporal looks like. You have all these top level objects, you have plain date, you can click into the plain date uh, documentation for the static methods. And most of them are all the same. It's just how much fidelity you get in the actual temporal object instance. You can compare to uh, plain date objects. Uh, you have properties on here. So year, month, day, um, like this. Uh, what else is there? And of course you have the uh, property, the method. So with, um, with calendar, so you have add, where's add? Add and subtract. So there's a very common theme and there's a lot of uh, predictability between all the APIs, which makes temporal a lot more easy to use than date. Okay, and that is your whirlwind tour of the new temporal object coming to a browser near you soon. Uh, I'm sure there'll be a production polyfill available sooner than it'll hit a browser, but I'm very excited to have a very pleasant to use API to deal with dates and times built into the browser. It's way past due and it is certainly about, yeah, time. Had to include almost one of those in this video. So hopefully you enjoy that little walkthrough and I look forward to any questions you may have about this in the comments below. Until then, I hope you are a subscriber and if you're not, do become one. And until then, I'll see you in the next video next time. Stay happy, stay good. See ya.